Hello, this is Catherine from Taking Tea with Catherine. We're about to go into the month of July. Now, there are two truths that are universally acknowledged about me. One is that I love Jane Austen. She's actually my favorite author, which sounds kind of like trite. A lot of people love Jane Austen, but hey, I like what I like. She's my favorite living, I should say, dead author. Um, I have a few authors that are still living that I quite love, and um, we'll go into them another time. But Jane Austen is going to be in any list number one for me. Just love her, love all the books she's written, love reading about her, love Jane Austen. The second truth is that I don't like the month of July. I don't hate everything that goes into July, but I don't like heat. As I've mentioned before, I don't like humidity and these things are just everywhere in July. I have to rely on the AC for any kind of happiness or the beach, which I really don't get too often enough, let's face it. And I also don't like the month of July because a lot of bad things have happened to me in July. Um, and a lot of death has happened in July, not just of uh, people that I'm close to. For instance, I lost my father in July, which is the top one. Um, but also just people that, um, in general, I've, I've liked as either writers, artists, musicians, etc. Um, starting with uh, this month, um, the third is going to be 50 years since Brian Jones died. The Rolling Stones. Horrible. 50 years. He should have still been alive. Anyway, Jane Austen died in July. I've outlived her already, which is horrific, as did um, Vincent van Gogh, however you pronounce his name. I also outlived him. Surprising, right? I don't look a day over 20. Come on. Um, <laughs> Alexander Hamilton, the famous duel, happened in July. A couple of days after he got shot, he died. That's a fun way to go. I believe he also died, if I'm not mistaken, on Jane Street. So let's make a whole full, full circle here. Um, he Anyway, let's not go too much into that. Oh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes, one of my favorite writers. Not my favorite of all time because mostly Sherlock Holmes I like, but that's another story for another time. So anyway, long story short, I like to take the month of July and keep busy. Sure, I have work. I mean, I have a few days off. I do other things with my time that aren't just work and play, but... Um, I like to keep my mind occupied on things other than all the death. And you know, my mind just go there. So what better way than to read Jane Austen books or books about Jane Austen? So when I heard about the Jane Austen July challenge, I mean, how could I not be a part of this? I'm not even a fan of challenges most of the time because it just makes me nervous. Oh, I'm not keeping up with my end. Oh, I haven't read what I should read. You know, I'm more of a mood reader. But let's face it, this is a challenge that's just made for me. What wasn't made for me it was made for a lot of Jane Austen readers and lovers. And um, it was, it has been conceived by two booktubers, one of which I, I have followed for some time, the other which I'm following as well, I believe. Um, so Books and Things, uh, Katie, her name is. I love her, her um, booktube. It's just, her channel is amazing. She's such, such an enthusiasm, such a great knowledge of books. And also Marissa from Blatantly Bookish, I advise you follow both of them. They're wonderful. So they came up with this challenge and it's on Goodreads as well as a, as a group, which I'm also following. And um, it comes up with six different challenges. And most of them, like I said, are right up my alley. Number one is read one of Jane Austen's six novels. I have read all of their six novels. I read some of them twice, but Let's do rereads. I love rereads. So they're also having some group reads, so I'm kind of going to follow along with that as well. And thankfully, one of them is one of my favorites, Sense and Sensibility. I mean, I just love Eleanor and Marianne. What a perfect combination of siblings and just a great story. Um, not a perfectly happy story, but a good one. I can't wait to reread this. I've Because I'm a cheater, I've already started a few chapters, and that's fine because you know what? It got me in the mood and I'm very much happy about that. They also have um, a group read at the last half of July that I might also join in on. We'll see. Northanger Abbey. This is another book. I've had this one a really long time. I gotta stop covering my face up. Although, you know, today I should. But anyway, I bought this so long ago. I bought this in a Barnes & Noble in Flushing, Queens, New York. There has not been a Barnes & Noble in Flushing, Queens, New York in a very, very long time. It's, it was one of the smaller shops, which I think they might actually be concentrating on in the near future. But it was right off of the Main Street Station. I used to um, have braces, yeah, you know. Um, and the, station, the, the doctor's office was right there. So... Um, you know, I had a little spending money and why not? And this was the last of the 
big six that I finished, and that was like in 1996, aging myself as usual. Um, and I think it was in July, if I'm not mistaken. So full circle, but we'll see if we can get to this one. I'll definitely get to Sense and Sensibility. The second um, of the challenge is read something by Jane Austen that is not one of her main six novels. So I've had this for some time. I, you know, I really can't remember if I've read this, so it's a good option. Love and Friendship. Is it misspelled? Yes, but you know what? In those days, I think Samuel Johnson or whatever his name was, was just working on his dictionary. So, you know, maybe they didn't have spelling the way we do now. So I can't wait to start this one. It's small, so it's not so much of a challenge for me, hopefully. Um, I really don't know much about this. I think it's supposed to be funny. Who knows? I'll let you know. So that's another one. Number three, read a nonfiction work about Jane Austen or her time, which I've done plenty of. I love, I've loved uh, Claire Tomlin's book. I've loved so many books. But this one's by a writer that I really enjoy her documentary. She gets right into it and she just loves history. Jane Austen at Home by Lucy Worsley. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. I've also started this one and so far quite enjoying it. Just about, it's really a biography about Jane Austen and her life. But I mean, she spent so much time at home that that just works. So I'm having a good time with this one. So number four. Read a retelling of a Jane Austen book. So this one I've wanted to get to as well. And so, hey, I want a pretty cover. Longborn, a novel by jo Joe Baker. I keep doing this. Joe Baker. And um, this is just basically a story. You ever watch Downton Abbey? Do you know how they have the whole synopsis of goings on upstairs with all the fancy people, the lady the lady this and the lord that, and it's wonderful. But then you go downstairs and you get into their lives and you think, well, that's, that evens things out of the time. So this is kind of a retelling of, of Pride and Prejudice based on what goes on with the servants. I mean, and you do hear references to some of the servants. And, you know, Hill, I think, is one of the servants. So why not? I mean, why not? I can't wait to get into that one. I haven't started that yet because I'm not a holy cheater person. That's not, that's not a sentence. But anyway, so the next one goes right into my reading goals. Uh, read a book by a contemporary of Jane Austen. Oh, yes. So, um, Evelina by Fanny Burney. I was, I was I meant to get into this one ages ago. I think it's a, here's a word I can't say, epistolatory, epistolatory. Episcopalian. Anyway, it's um, it's just a book of letters, but it tells a story. So it's a novel, and it's of the time. Perfect. Goes together. Um, very much looking forward to that. I hope I'm looking forward to it. I almost thought about reading The Mysteries of Udolpho, especially because Northanger Abbey, and that would just go together. But it's kind of a big book, and I just didn't want to... Another one, this is... This is actually... I should have put this in with Longbourn, but I didn't. It's... um. I don't know, it's a modern, it's a modern retelling of a novel of Northanger Abbey by Val, Val McDermott, who I haven't read yet. I kind of want to get to this too, but we'll see if I have time. I don't know why I keep putting Northanger Abbey to and Peggy, because it is a good story and it has a Catherine as the heroine. And I'm a Catherine, so I should relate. And you know, so many of the Catherines in Jane Austen's stories are a little bit, eh. I mean, even if they're interesting characters, they're not quite people that you want to know, like Lady Catherine de Bourgh, oh my goodness, or, or um, the Bennet sister, Kitty, who's a little, she's kind of the boring one. So I, I mean, I've read Northanger Abbey, so I know that Catherine in Northanger Abbey is a little bit naive, but that's okay because I'm pretty naive. And I was definitely naive when I was that age. So it works. And I like, I don't know if the modern story is going to have a bath in it, but I went to bath. I did a day trip a while back and it was it was a great city I would love to go back anyway back to the challenge now we're off of books now we're into movies which are easy to do you know some days I'm home and I'm just like humid out and I want to be in the AC and I just want to lie around and watch a Jane Austen movie so they have watch a direct screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book which I love to do one of my favorites is Sense and Sensibility of the mid 90s Kate Winslet Emma Thompson I mean you can't get better than that the Pride and Prejudice of the 90s even even the other Pride and Prejudices are very good 
Um, the persuasions are fantastic, but I'm gonna try if I'm I think I'm gonna do the Sense and Sensibility of approximately 2007. I did like it when I watched it. Um, not as much as the other Sense and Sensibility, but I'm gonna try and I think I can give it a go. I feel like I have a hair in my mouth. I'm sorry about that. I have a cat. I have two cats. Um, number seven is watch a modern screen adaptation. I'm reading from a book. Can you tell? of a Jane Austen book. So I haven't decided completely. I know Clueless is fantastic. Um, I don't know if I'm in the mood for that one as if, um, but I was kind of thinking it's a little bit of a loosely based adapta adaptation. Um, the Jane Austen book club, I, I have the book as well, but uh, the, the, the film is pretty good. The, the idea is these, these, I believe six people-ish come together somewhere in California. None of them seem to have to worry about money, but that's another story. Um, they come together and every month they read a different Jane Austen book. And every month something happens to one of the characters that is similar to what's happening in the book. So in a sense, it's an adaptation. I don't know if you agree with me, but hey, my choice of this challenge. So let's have some fun. Let's not go crazy. So I think the, I think the point is to have fun with this. This is not a scholarly thing. I'm not gonna make any money off of this. It's just to enjoy myself. And uh, I love Jane Austen, okay? Um, did we talk about this tea? Speaking of which, because we gotta bring tea into the story and this can be enjoyed hot or iced. Simpson and Vale, Jane Austen's black tea blend. I mean, it's got all the things that I like. It has black tea, hello. Spearmint, I like mint, it's good for my stomach. I have a terrible stomach. Lavender flowers, I like lavender. And vanilla flavor, which sounds kind of tricky, vanilla flavor. But I like Simpson and Vale. I've been ordering from them for years. I have never been up to see their shop, I hope. Is there a shop? But anyway, they're one of my top favorite American tea blending tea people. They have a wonderful catalog to look at. They have a lot of great products. Um, so I'm not sponsored by anybody, by the way, but just FYI, if you ever want to choose a tea company um, online or via catalog, why not? Simpson and Vale. Anyway, so that's my challenge. That's my version of the challenge. I am really looking forward to, to it. Like I said, I've already gotten started. Um, if you would like to join this challenge, even loosely so, just let me know. Comments of what you wouldn't mind reading this month. Um, or what your opinion is of Jane Austen herself. I love to talk. I love to talk about her when I was when I was in college. Yes, I did go to college. Um, my first thesis in English was about Jane Austen, and or was it my second thesis? No, I think my first one was about kilts. Anyway, um, at some point I wrote about Jane Austen, and that was around the same time I was reading her. Here's a word I can't say. Over, 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 Anyway, O E U V R E probably spell it better than I can say it, French words. But anyway, um, so I was probably like in the midst or toward the end of reading all of the Jane Austen books. So what a great time to write about her. And so I, like I said, I love talking about her. If you ha again, comment below if you like, um, follow, subscribe, all the things if you want to get involved. Follow I'm going to try to link these two ladies below, Katie and Marissa. Uh, Marissa. Um, so that... Um, because they're the ones who came up with it. You should definitely follow them. So I'm going to try to link them below. And um, well, that's all for now. Nice talking to you. And have a lovely day. And have a lovely July. Bye.